We are headed out of town. We are on our way to Naples, Florida. Babe, what are we going for? Oh God. Sorry, my brain. She sees a camera and she automatically melts. <laughs> it's like Sorry, the Wicked Witch working. of the West who gets water poured on her. I'm just All you do is working for the last four and a half point hours. a camera in my Holly's direction and she just, just like, she just begins to, she begins to shrivel into the crowd. We're heading to Naples. Uh, we are going to uh, have some genetic testing done uh, and MRI, MRIs, um, like pathology. No. So yeah, we're gonna have a full body MRI. And we're gonna have our genome sequenced by the longevity clinic there that is run by our good friend, Dr. Carl Ducharme. And uh, it's going to tell us basically a few things. Um, we're gonna get a, first off, they're gonna look and see if we have any problems right now with the MRI, the full body MRI. Yeah, so basically that can detect like cancerous tumors, uh, any kind of shadowing, like they've been able to detect um, like blood clots and things like this. Yeah, um, aneurysms. Aneurysms, like in really young, healthy, assumedly healthy people. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think that this preventative measure um, rather than a treatment or a curative intent is so much better. Um, you know, yeah, so their, their, their goal is to stop disease before it happens, which is pretty cool. I mean, this is like futuristic medicine right here. Turn right so, onto State Broad 54. Um, and there's a lot of kits out there that claim to test your genes and all this kind of stuff, but that, those are so unreliable. This is actually legit verified science. And what's really cool is uh, they have data to show that the method that they use actually can add uh, one to not, I think they said one to 10 years to people's life. And of everybody they've tested, they've, every, they've made everybody, they've put them into a study. Of everybody they've tested, I think it was like two, 3,000 people. 14% of the, oh, so these were all people who were deemed healthy by a regular doctor's visit. 14% of them had actionable items, right? So I think like 2% of people, they found tumors that nobody else found. And like 2.5%, they found aneurysms or blood clots, you know, these sorts of things. So really cool concept. Uh, we're excited to, to get this done. We like Naples and we like visiting our friends and we have a stowaway. Hey, who's at the back of the seat? <laughs> Say hi, Eileen. Hi, guys. So, Eileen is Holly's best friend from Australia. And uh, let's give some props to myself and Eileen. We uh, organized her to come over, as you saw earlier, and Holly had no freaking idea. So, uh, we're going to go down, we're going to get this stuff done, we're going to document it for you guys, and we are going to have a good time. Be vlogging it all. Thanks, guys. Without giving you half of my dough and even worse if I was broke, would you want me? No. <laughs> no? Oh. You know what I mean? No. If y'all shit come close to me, she ain't know I'm always supposed to pay. I'm getting money like I'm supposed to pay. I'm getting money like I'm supposed to pay. I'm in all my clothes to pay. And all the money in the boy is supposed to pay. Oh. So we have another surprise. Wick <laughs> is like, I can't handle all the surprises. So we are driving. I'm thinking we're going to Carl and Carly, as our friends that live down here in Naples. And I'm like, are we there yet? I've never seen any of these streets. I'm like, are we taking the long way? <laughs> Oh, so Lord, we just we just rock up at out. like this random Literally house. I'm like, it out till we pull up what are house. we doing? Like, am I meeting someone new? So we're staying at an Airbnb. So apparently we're five seconds from the water. We've got a nice pool. So we have the weekend down here in beautiful Naples. So I can't wait to show you guys the area. But every time I come here, I always forget to film, and it's just stunning. Like I would move here in a heartbeat. So. Yeah, I can't wait to show you. So we'll have to have an early night tonight because we've got to get up um, at about six tomorrow um, to go in for all the testing. So we have to do that fasted. So last meal's at about 10 o'clock tonight. And then, um, yeah, we'll head down to the Longevity Clinic, which is in downtown Naples. So very exciting. All right, it's early in the morning. She's wrecked. I'm kind of normal, been wrecked all week because I had the kids, so I was up at six o'clock every day anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, 
Her not getting sleep for one night is like me not getting sleep for five nights in terms of irritability <laughs> and general malaise. Uh -huh. <laughs> How are you feeling? Awful. Absolutely awful. Oh, it's just awful. I, um, I can feel all the glands in my neck. <laughs> oh my I god. I have a sore throat. I'm actually going to get a cold. I'm so excited because oh. I just know. Like, I know when I'm, I never get colds and um, I'm a good, a good one. Well, unfortunately, we're on the way to Longevity Clinic and it's full doctors, so maybe... I'm not sure what they're going to be able to do about it. <laughs> so, we're on our way to the Longevity Clinic, and, uh... Yeah, I got a few bags under my eyes from the past week, but that's alright. And, um... We are going to get our assessments done, so we have not had anything to eat. And we'll be very hungry by the end of this, because it's going to be a several hour long uh, ordeal. But that's okay, mile. it's good for Turn left onto good, Miami Trailies. Good cause. Keep I us think they keep us alive. Said that they, they have a chef that works in the building um, who prepares nice meals for everybody when they finish. So that'll be nice. That is correct. They have their own personal chef, which is pretty cool. So looking forward to showing you guys this place and uh, yeah, keep watching. It should be fun. One of the best things about Florida is it's always hot. <laughs> So you're not cold in the morning? Not cold in the morning. I guess you just adjust to what you have to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Well, hi. Dr. Norton. Good to see you. <laughs> How are you doing? Right? Good to see you. Good morning. Hey, good yeah. morning. Good morning. Oh, delayed and happy. You guys ready to go? Oh, thank you. Yeah, look at you. You right. look like a something fancy. Yeah. I don't know what those are called, but yeah, you know. Yeah, pretty doctory, you know. <laughs> doctory, yeah. Doctory. I'm the kind of doctor where I can sit at home and work in my underwear, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I ditched the white coat, so you don't have to be that sterile here. <laughs> yeah. She's not functioning right now, no. are you? Because of the fasting? No caffeine. No, I uh, no. just early morning, um, Lane snored all night, so I got oh. an hour sleep. <laughs> didn't snore all night. But for, oh, apparently for a solid that. couple of hours I did, so. So I really have not slept. Yeah. I think I'm gonna come down with a nice Actually, um, you'll probably sleep in the MRI. I think so. Yeah. I did when I went through. Yeah. Oh, that would it's be about nice. An hour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I they'll, absolutely will. They'll give you earbuds and tell you what Pandora station you want, and they can put on whatever you want. So. I'm gonna tell them to put heavy metal on for you. I agree with that. Headbangers. Oh, that's gonna get me sick. So, Carl, tell us about what we're gonna do today. So uh, this is the most comprehensive advanced health screening you can currently get in the world. Technically, uh, we are under an IRB, a research protocol. Uh, so we do whole genomic sequencing and we do whole body MRI, which includes a brain MRI, brain MRA to look at the vasculature. We're looking for tumors, we're looking for aneurysms uh, on the MRI scan. Uh, for you, Lane, we will do a coronary CT mm -hmm. uh, to look at calcium scoring to predict cardiovascular risk. Okay. Um, and we'll also get a series of uh, a, a blood panels, CBC, CMP, uh, B12, vitamin D, uh, to go into the research protocol. So we will get the MRI results back and the blood work back for tomorrow, which we will review on the big screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, in about six to eight weeks, we'll have the whole genomic report and that uh, we put through a deep learning uh, artificial intelligence algorithm to incorporate all of this data. We have so much data we are going to get, there's no way a physician could possibly interpret all of this by himself or herself. So the AI interprets all of it and we will get a full integrated risk report uh, which will plot out risk for uh, dementia such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's dementia, uh, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, AFib, stroke, uh, specific cancers. Uh, we'll look at some fun things. Um, uh, we'll look at caffeine metabolism, lactose intolerance, uh, a little bit of ancestry. Uh, so we'll find out what percentage Neanderthal you really are, Lane. <laughs> <laughs> she would say 100%. 100 Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah. So we will find all of that out. Um, so I'm very excited for you guys. I know I was excited when I went through. Uh, you learn more about yourself than you ever thought you'd know. 
Are you, are you sure you want to go through this? Because you may not want to hang around with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can put uh, I can be worse. <laughs> <laughs> can cool. Be we're looking. Yeah. Of my, uh, love for te- yeah, sorry, so I love for technology. Yeah. So let's get started. I think Lane, let's uh, let's uh, let's bring you guys back to your uh, your room here, and then we'll get your blood work, some vital signs, and we'll do a little balance uh, assessment as well. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, so we have just been given our little outfits, um, socks, our women. Like, we have to take off everything. There's no metal, obviously, with the MRI. Yeah, I like so. this already. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> of course you do. Take it off. So it's actually kind of cool. They give us, like, nice uh, warm clothes, even though it's nice and hot. But I like that they think of that. It's I pretty thick. some pretty big feet. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your height? I don't know. What was it? 71 inches. Oh, really? 5 foot 11. Hey, you've grown that sushi hey, roll. You had the extra sushi roll last night. You know what, though? You right? always are a little bit taller in the morning and before you go throughout the day. Is that, so. is that fact? I think so. I think, yes. It's mm. actually fact. Because when you stand up, you're just compressed over. Like, right. there's, yeah, obviously. Because, like, I know if I take my height in the afternoon, it's usually like five, ten and a half. Yeah. Ah. Just going to get your blood pressure. I was supposed to be the first Norton to make six foot, and I didn't quite make it. There's always lifts. <laughs> I'm not Tom Cruise, all right? No. <laughs> God, how tall is he? Five seven, five six. God, so he's my height. Wow, that is a very short man. It's better than your last one. Oh yeah, I, I think that was an aberration. I think I was just stressed. Interesting. Mm. Had the forehead veins pop up. <laughs> okay. Do you need to hold anybody's hand? No, no, okay. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a look. She's low key cheeky. <laughs> yeah, I like it already. <laughs> You can keep your arm like this. Is that mm-hmm. comfortable for mm-hmm. you? Okay. Should get some nice ones out of that guy. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna have no blood left after this last week. <laughs> oh yeah, she had a. Blood I blood had a blood test on Monday. It's now Friday, and I they took six vials. Uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, before I stand up, I'm just gonna read a few wall signs Perfect. to make sure I don't pass out. Your poison is very high. <laughs> fair to say that my training session suffered greatly after that. I remember I was like, why can't I lift anything? Mm. <laughs> your arms straight as you can. Yeah. There you go. Is that your smallest needle? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. There you go. Let us stick. Okay. Good. How are you doing there, Doc? I'm fine. This actually doesn't bother me. Doesn't it? I can't look at it though. Like if I look at the blood coming out, then it bothers me. Oh really? Yeah. So I just kind of keep my. Maybe that's my problem. I should stop looking at the blood. Oh, you watch it. Oh yeah, that's the problem. (laughs) Yeah. That's the problem. Now I'll watch it later and be like, ooh. Yeah. You just lost half of our YouTube audience. Oh, I'm sorry. I better get (laughs) out. Actually, yeah. I guess there's some people that are sensitive to that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Mm-hmm. We probably offended them long ago. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The 18th vial of blood for this week is about to come out. This is what you did for a long time, right, Carl? You were a phlebotomist. Yeah, actually, for uh, a few years before medical school, I worked in a 600-bed hospital, and I would get there at 5 a.m. and draw blood on about 50 patients every day, anywhere from the peds unit to the psych ward to the ICU. Uh, the psych ward people, they called him Steve and said he wasn't very good. Yeah, they, <laughs> uh, one time I had, uh, me and the nurses were chasing a child underneath the ping pong table, and he kept calling me Sean, and <laughs> oh my God. it was kind of unreal. <laughs> <laughs> You've got great veins. I have great veins. You know. No, do you? <laughs> do you want to inspect my lovely veins? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 
Sorry. Turn the phlebotomist like... on. Yeah, well, I imagine like if you're like with somebody who's like really overweight, it can be hard to find a vein sometimes. Yeah. Or just elderly people in general don't really have the same kind of vascularity anymore, do they? Like, I know. I point some out. do. Some do. I think once when my nan had to go and have her blood taken when she was um, right. um, yeah, uh, undergoing chemotherapy, mm -hmm. she, um, I think the lady had to like have several attempts um, to try and even like get a vein. I, oh, I felt so bad. Poor thing. She would have had like bruises all over her. Mm. <laughs> Say night, sweet Holly. What's that? Say good night, sweet Holly. <laughs> no. I've been, uh, I think I'm up about 300 more calories per day, and I'm down mm. one pound. Oh, wow. I'm leaner. I've been wow. adapting like crazy, so. So a lot of people don't know this, but Carl and I were roommates freshman year. Yeah. And then he never, he never wanted to live with me again after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll move that seat up. Thank you. So, and Carl actually uh, is a bodybuilder himself. So, Carl, you've done how many shows have you done? Oh, I think I've done six now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, last one, you uh, you actually finished second, almost won your pro card. Yeah, very close. Uh, one of those, they uh, you get to the center of the stage, exactly where you want to be. You go through about twelve minutes of quarter turns, and uh, the chips fall with a split decision. It was. It was pretty intense. It was awesome. Nothing, Ooh, cool. nothing can beat that feeling. So yeah, Carl and I got into bodybuilding together. Um, so we were training partners and roommates. And I think the gym is probably about the only thing we had in common. <laughs> the gym uh, and- Rap music. Gym, <laughs> rap music and, although you were way more ghetto than me. Yeah. <laughs> Carl had a, a, a- I didn't know about the rap music. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So yeah, had, Mitsubishi Eclipse. I had a 98 Eclipse. It was lo lowered on coilovers, neon underbody, 15 subs in the back, oh, 2,000 watt serious. amp. Yeah. <laughs> the most ghetto Minnesota white boy ever to, ever to come to Florida. I was going to say that about Minnesota, but I want you and Jeff yeah. need to talk about that rabbit yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we uh, are, I think our. Uh, our punchline freshman year was protein, protein, protein. That's all we <laughs> talked about. <laughs> and I went on to do research. So Carl went the clinical side, went to... So Carl, give us uh, your background, like what's your... Where'd you go to med school? Oh, um, so I went to Des Moines University in Des Moines, Iowa. It's an osteopathic medical school. So uh, we take a more uh, integrative, uh, whole body approach to the patient. It's essentially the same thing as having an MD, except we learn a... Uh, some manipulative skills uh, as well, uh, more hands-on approach too. And then I went to Las Vegas, went to Valley Hospital, and did three years of internal medicine residency, uh, board certified internal medicine. I also took a uh, certification course in age management medicine while I was out in Las Vegas. So I'm certified in age management medicine, uh, which is uh, healthy aging and uh, increasing and keeping quality of life as we age. And then what you got here and you were at so, Naples General, right? Yeah, well, yeah, 2013, um, moved to Naples, uh, started at Physicians Regional as a hospitalist, taking care of hospitalized patients, um, worked my way up to the uh, chairman of the Department of Medicine for the hospital, served for two years as the chairman, and then uh, went off into my, my true passion, nutrition, fitness, advanced health screening, and wellness. Sweet. So this is what, like a five minute drive down the road, something like that? Yeah, but three minutes maybe, depending on stoplight. Gotcha. So uh, we are at Radiology Regional. This is where our clients come in to get MRI uh, and their uh, coronary CT. So the coronary CT, the protocol is for uh, clients 35 years and older. Yes. Well, I now fit that category. <laughs> So part of the process, um, our, our partnership is with Human Longevity and Health Nucleus in La Jolla, California, where they started all of this research. They're actually the scientist team that first sequenced the human genome in the year 2000. So we send all of these images, roughly 10,000 MRI images, 
to San Diego for post-processing and they do special proprietary techniques to look at hippocampus volume, to look at dementia risk. They do liver quantification to look for liver fat and uh, iron quantification within the liver um, and special diffusion weighted images to look for tumors and cancers. And then they send all of those images back here so the radiologist can look at them. That show sounds fancy. <laughs> planted into your body. Those are the only surgeries you've had. No cancer. Just sign those for me. Sure. Just above Sharon's knee. Three sixteen. Fifteen. Gorgeous view. Then I guess Sharon. And you need to have you lock up some things that mm -hmm. can't go in the MRI machine. Yep. So your watch. Yep. Um, your bracelets should be okay. Yeah, these are just so cool. Yeah. And then anything, your phone. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I have your phone. Actually, that's your fault. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, it's right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she, already sold, she already sold it on eBay. <laughs> and then nothing else, correct? Yep. Nope. Good. Perfect. Josh, it's okay? Yeah, they'll have okay. them um, take them off in the room. Okay. And let them on oh, Great. We'll just have a seat here in the MRI tech video. We'll come in. Um, Cool. Hi, Mayor. How are you? Hi, Lane. My name is nice Leah. To nice to meet you. Oh, yep. Let me change. All right. You ready? Yep. I see. Do you mind if I go to the bathroom real quick? Sure, of course. Why is it Not that I know of. Has anybody explained this thing to you at all? Uh, just that it's full body MRI with a, uh, what was it called? Coronary, something other? Like well, yeah, we'll do the coronary CT in a little bit. This is, yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, yes, several times. They're very, very loud. Yeah. Yep.
in here, I want you to hold on to that call button. If you need anything, if you need me at any point, she, she is a dead road. Just squeeze that and I'll come in, okay? Lane, we'll check you out on the other side. You doing okay? All righty, here we go. So we are checking Holly's balance right now on the balance tracker. Every time. 11. Hey. Wow. You know what the couple has, has done? There's such a gap. Yeah. Because um, my ass is so big. <laughs> so, so you're my saying back, my butt is even bigger. My lower back's a little tight. Yes. yes. <laughs> you also have a large bubble butt. So I was just going to say. What's your recommendation? If they could put like a little, just a little pillow. A lumbar a, support. A small, yeah, lumbar oh, support. Okay. It might, might be helpful for you. Because I was a little tight. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. meant it in a really. I Lane, I thought you were it, loose this it, whole it time. Yeah. 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 So, I know what you meant. Yeah. Like how it, I came out the first thing, I was like, right. "Hey, a huge ass." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is so I'm working on it. Well, so, well, I mean, right. yeah. I mean, she, she's getting, right so now. in the last couple of months, <laughs> she's gained uh, six kilo, six pounds of lean body mass. Yeah, that's what she was telling me. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. with her reverse, we've been having an intense reverse diet discussion. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, so that was, that was cool. It's just, you know, you were kind of mummified in that MRI for, yeah. for about an hour or so. Did you sleep? Did you sleep? Uh, I think I kind of dozed on and off and then hallucinated. <laughs> so, but that Did was he say something? Snore? Did you guys hear anything? Yeah, well, just, she talks to him. Yeah, yeah, out, so. So. I don't think I said anything stupid. <laughs> no. Yeah. But, no, it was fine. You know, it's just MRIs are always a little bit uh, weird and you're like really confined. Mm -hmm. but. The worst one I ever had was for my pec when I had my pec tear because they wanted me to put my arm like this oh. and face down. And I also was sick at the time. I had like a fever. So, and I was I was here for about 20 minutes. I finally had to grab the, I was like, I can't, like my shoulders. Yeah. So, but that was, that was fine. Well, should we get going with Holly? Yeah. Holly, this is Erin. Hi, Holly. Hi. Pleasure Hi. to meet you. Welcome. Hey. All right. So come on with me. We'll get everything, all the paperwork put together. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, right in here. Good. And I'm just going to have you have a seat in these chairs. I'm going to grab your paperwork. I'll be right back. How was breakfast? Breakfast was good. Yeah. yeah. You want some coffee? Oh, I'm looking forward to coffee. <laughs> Hi, Cece. Hi. How are you? This is Wayne and Holly. Oh, okay. nice, nice to meet you. Hi, Holly. Hi, nice How are you? Good. Um, all right, let's see you back. Okay. Are you, are you guys going to hang out here? Or? I We're think, going. Do, you, do you mind if we just I'm just going to throw my walk in into the... Getting in okay, the only thing with this is patients? that, um, yeah. Back here now. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll... So I'll, I don't think... I'll talk. Okay. So the MRI, like, uh, got hot at certain points. What was that? Yeah. So, uh, you can feel heat. We do a special body composition analysis using the MRI. Uh, so we're looking at visceral or organ fat, which is actually the biggest cardiovascular risk factor from a body composition standpoint. So when they're doing that special uh, imaging technique, 
uh, the leaner you are, you will feel a warming sensation throughout your body. So if you're incredibly lean, you will feel hot during the MRI. Hmm. I felt warm, so let's have a little bit of some blubber on me. All right, so we're we're back at the longevity clinic. We're gonna get you some breakfast now. My foot, the most exciting part of this whole day. <laughs> You were saying that breakfast is made oh, by... We uh, actually at Landmark Hospital, we have a chef who used to own his own restaurant. Uh, he just loves making food, so we have an actual chef that works for Longevity Bioimaging and for the hospital here. So he has made you two omelets I requested for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So now, is this like a, a, a VIP treatment, or is this something well, that a lot of patients? Get? Honestly, every, every client that comes through Longevity Bioimaging gets a custom-made breakfast by our chef, and all the patients who are here in the hospital get breakfast, lunch, and dinner by the chef. That's awesome. She was off. So we're gonna do the balance tracker now. <laughs> okay. So what you're gonna do? Hold on, don't go anywhere. Uh, what we're going to do um, is you're going to stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Mm -hmm. It's not going to try to knock you off or move or anything like that. You're just going to stand very still. So you're going to stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Mm -hmm. You're going to put your hands on your hips. You're okay. going to look straight at the wall. Well, you're going to face the wall mm -hmm. and you're going to close your eyes. Okay. We're doing a total of four trials. Each trial is 20 seconds long. Okay. The name of the game is you want to stay still. Okay. Okay. Cool. So get up there, get settled, and then we'll start. Let's do this. Okay. Here we go. You ready? Mm-hmm. Not bad. You've got three more to go. Ready? Mm-hmm. I'm going to start the next one. Mm -hmm. Very good. Last but not least. Ready? Good. Awesome. Great job. Okay. Risk acceptable is low. It's good. You got a low phone right. How do you feel? Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much. What's that? I said a little bit rested. I think I Did you sleep? Like Oh, you did? Yeah, That's I think good. I fell asleep for like the first 20 minutes and then yeah. I wake up at the end. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, yeah. you know, the funny thing, it was, it's loud, it was probably the same as you snore, but you had to. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly hear the music actually, it's uh, not too dissimilar to lion snoring in the <laughs> yeah. Hey! What music did you get? I actually just had like med spa. Like, med like, spa! Relax, relaxing music. <laughs> That's good. Cool. That's good to know. I was almost gonna do uh, some metal music. I thought, nah, it's a bit early. Did you get some lumbar support? No. No? How did you do with your big ass? My big ass is quite fast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe.
Mine must be bigger then. Yeah, no, I had two pillows on my knees, so I guess that kind of helps to lose. Yeah. Made a lot of the same genes. Mm. Like, uh, a lot of them are involved in the gluconeogenic cascade. Like, CERT1, um, uh, GCN1, and some other stuff, so. Actually, no, GCN2. It's been a while since I've liver metabolism. Anyway, sorry, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, n now that we've reviewed your your personal medical history, let's go through some of your family history so mm -hmm. we can start to, to build out that hereditary uh, hereditary branch here. Um, is your mother still living? Yes. All right. How old is she? Uh, she was born in 55, and her birthday is in December, so that makes her 63. Okay. All right. Does she have any major health problems? Yes. Mom has multiple myeloma. Okay. Does uh, any other uh, cancer with your mother? No. Okay. Has she ever had any cardiac problems, uh, stroke, uh, irregular heartbeats? No. Okay. No high blood pressure? No. Okay. Uh, what about your father? Is he still living? Yes. How old is he? Dad was born in 52, his birthday is in September, so he's 66. Okay. All right. Does he have any major health problems? Uh, he was type 2 diabetic. It's uh, it's under control now, so mm -hmm. he's lost some weight, and I think he's off most of his medications. So great, but yeah, type two diabetic and had high blood pressure as well. Okay, okay, and uh, no cancers with him. No cancer, no. Okay, all right. Um, does he have macular degeneration? I or think so. I think so. So he, he, he's had several eye problems, and I think one of them they mentioned was macular degeneration, but I could be wrong. But he's had, he's had to have like um, cataract surgery and some sure. other stuff. Okay. So. All right. Uh, let's go to your grandparents. Uh, let's start with your mother's side. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Papa had everything. Uh, yeah. So a heart disease. So it had uh, CBD. Uh, I think he had three heart attacks, two open heart surgeries, mm -hmm. uh, and stroke as well. A couple of strokes, I think. Okay. How old was he when he had his first heart attack or stroke? I want to say 52. 50. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, young. Okay. Especially back then, that was in the 70s. So they did the open heart surgery where they literally like broke his rib cage, yeah. pulled it apart, you know, like mm -hmm. back when it was carpentry. Yeah. And not an outpatient procedure. Right. Right now, uh, you go in and uh, sometimes you go home the same day. Yeah. You get a stent and you're... <laughs> Crazy. Um, how old did he live to? 84. And your grandmother on that side? Do you remember uh, how old she was? Uh, Mello was... She was 90, I think, when she passed away. Okay. Did she have any major health problems? Uh, Alzheimer's, dementia. Okay. So uh, we're going to actually look at some specific Alzheimer's genes, uh, APOE4. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, with our MRI brain sequencing, we're going to look at the uh, hippocampus, your overall volume, and how much of the uh, medial temporal horn that your hippocampus occupies to determine your dementia risk. Okay, so, so how does that uh, so matter the, for that? So um, we're going to pull in your genetics. So the AI will incorporate uh, your genetics, the MRI, and your family history uh, okay. to give you a risk. Uh, so we will put it on a continuum, actually. Mm. Um, so uh, if the average person who's 37 years old uh, is in the middle of this continuum, we will place you at either higher or lower risk than that person. And actually, with uh, our tech team is developing an app that should be coming out later this year where you can actually bend the curve. It will show you your, your five-year risk of dementia. Mm -hmm. For you, it's not very significant, but as we age, it is. Mm -hmm. um, it will show you your risk for dementia, and we can bend the curve by in increasing or decreasing the BMI. Oh, or, or other lifestyle factors. Oh, so, so what could happen. Yeah, oh, because so one third, about thirty-three percent of our dementia risk mm -hmm. is lifestyle. Actually, mm -hmm. eating eating properly and maintaining a uh, healthy body composition and exercising. Mm -hmm. um, so just because you uh, somebody may have those genes for dementia, doesn't mean that they're going to get dementia. Right. 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 So genes load the gun, and environment and lifestyle pull the trigger. So okay. for dementia, the lifestyle environment arm is about 33%. Okay, so pretty significant. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, let's, um, your father's side, uh, your uh, grandmother on your father's side. Uh, I think she had a stroke uh, once. She really didn't have any health problems. She, um, she died because she slipped and fell and hit her head uh, and then mm -hmm. had a hematoma and went into a coma mm -hmm. and passed away. Um, and then grandfather on that side, I don't know a lot about, but I just know he, ha he died of lung cancer. Okay. Was he, but he, was, he was a smoker. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, one of the other things we look at with the genetics piece is called pharmacogenomics. Okay. Uh, so, you know, most people don't know this. The FDA publishes a list. Uh, it's about 300 medications where they actually recommend genetic testing prior to starting these medications. These are common blood thinners, common anti-anxiety medications, um, common cholesterol medications hmm. uh, that the majority of the population takes some of these medications and mm -hmm. these people are not tested for pharmacogenomics to see how they metabolize these drugs through their liver. So this could actually like cause people health problems? or Yes, exactly. So uh, we actually run the full pharmacogenomics panel when we sequence your genome and we will tell you how fast or slow if you were a, a rapid metabolizer, uh, you know, an inter intermediate metabolizer or slow metabolizer of all of these medications. Mm. Um, so uh, in real world application, um, if somebody has a heart attack and they go in and the physician stents open that artery, the cardiologist does, they prescribe them aspirin and one of the most common medications, Plavix, mm -hmm. both antiplatelet medications to help uh, keep that stent open and prevent it from clotting and thrombosing over. Well, Plavix is metabolized through some of these genes in the liver. It's mm -hmm. actually a pro-drug. So if you do not metabolize it fast enough, you will not build up therapeutic levels of Plavix in your blood. Oh, it's so Plavix will be useless for you, and hmm. you're going to be at risk for having another heart attack and thrombosis in that stent. Interesting. Um, another common blood thinner is Coumadin. Many yeah. people who have My grandfather was on Coumadin. atrial fibrillation, uh, blood clot, DVT, pulmonary embolism, um, you know, strokes, they get prescribed Coumadin to prevent those things or treat them. And so uh, Coumadin is metabolized through some of these genes as well. Hmm. So Yeah, I know my grandfather, he got prescribed Coumadin, mm -hmm. and that was actually the beginning of a blood platelet disorder he got where he couldn't regulate his blood platelets. They would go up and down and up and down and up and down, and it actually mm -hmm. ended up killing him. Um, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So maybe if they'd had this back then, yeah. he would have lived a little bit longer. So most, most clients that have come through here, uh, I'll be honest, very few are squeaky clean and metabolize all these medications normally. Hmm. Almost everybody has some, some uh, gene on that list that metabolizes a subset of these drugs, uh, you know, rapidly or, or slowly. Except for um, Carl. Carl. Actually, mine, uh, my panel is fully normal, well, <laughs> believe it or not. So I, uh, no. I remember in, about 10 years ago in grad school, there was a guy who presented this has been this research was in its infancy on polymorphisms and caffeine metabolism. Yeah. So we found two genes that would basically determine whether or not you metabolized it by the liver fast or slow, mm -hmm. and then how sensitive you were uh, brain-wise to it fa mm -hmm. in terms of not sensitive or sensitive. And he broke it down into quartiles and found that for people who are uh, fast metabolizers of caffeine who are not sensitive, it actually has a protective effect on cardiovascular disease. But for people who are slow metabolizers, who are sensitive, it has the same risk factor as cigarettes. So wow. <laughs> it was pretty incredible data, because how do you make uh, recommendations, broad recommendations as the government to, this is why you know research comes out that says, well, coffee's bad, and it says coffee's good, mm -hmm. says caffeine's bad, caffeine's good. Yeah. How do you, you know, make uh, recommendations if you're the government, when if you say, well, don't drink caffeine, or don't, eat mm -hmm. caffe don't have caffeine, you're actually placing some of the population at risk, whereas if you say, okay, we'll have this much caffeine, you're actually placing another portion of the population at risk. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult, and that's why like, this stuff is so crucial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so part of, our, uh, part of our investigational report that you will get, we'll look at some of those caffeine SNPs, actually. Oh, sweet. So you'll find out if you're a, a slow or a fast metabolizer. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. But you probably already know, depending on how you handle caffeine. I'd say I'm probably about normal. I'm probably about so. normal. Like, I don't get real jittery or anything. She thinks that she I think I'm a non-responder. So she thinks she's a very fast metabolizer. So we yeah. find out. Plot twist, you're actually slow. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be interesting? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll find out. Uh, do you have any other questions?
No, it seems pretty straightforward. I'm just excited to to see what things say. Yeah, so now that you've had your MRI and your coronary CT, uh, the radiology team, uh, they're looking at these process images and uh, uh, working on these reports. So we'll meet back tomorrow and uh, we'll put the MRIs up on the big screen and we'll look at your blood work, your MRIs sequence by sequence and uh, we'll find out more about you. Okay. Sweet, awesome. Yeah.